Here's, uh, I think, one of the world's funniest, most inspired, most unimitatable men. He uh, first became, I guess, known really to the public with the 2,000-year-old man record that he made with, with Carl Reiner. And uh, then he and I made some Valentine beer. Can I say that? Commercials together, which played in the radio for a long time, were for about a year, and uh, were very funny, but didn't sell the beer, apparently. But uh, people tried to buy the commercials, which is sort of amusing. And Mel Brooks uh, won an Oscar for his, uh, the producers. Certainly one of the world's weirdest men, Mr. <laughs> Mel Brooks. Oh, yeah. I didn't mean to say one of the world's weirdest men. I meant one of the. Do you the know they were playing Springtime for Hitler? That, is that what that was? Yeah, I that's wanted, right. Thanks a lot, Bobby. <coughs> Somehow you just don't resemble him. I don't know what it is, but. Well, it's. I'm not political anymore. We have a little place in Argentina. We go and coffee, doing our best. That's so. Say, you're, you're an Oscar winner. We were just discussing the Oscars. I don't know if you were paying attention. Yes, to I. Here. I am an Oscar winner. Mm -hmm. I'd like to thank. <laughs> Are you going to use yours for a doorstop? Still thinking. Yeah. Uh, my Oscar. Where is your Oscar? My Oscar. My Oscar is living in Detroit now. Well, <laughs> <laughs> my. Lord Alfred Douglas. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. My Oscar is on my mother's credenza in Brooklyn. Oh, no. It sits there with my Emmy and my really? mammy. <laughs> I thought your mother my was mother, in Miami. Everybody in the building comes in and to see. It looks very good tonight. Is she proud of it? Does your mother know what you do? All mothers are proud of everything. <laughs> what do they know? <laughs> How can I tell? I can picture her saying, look what my son, who should have been a doctor, won. I think that's probably well, her I, attitude. She never really wanted me to go into show business because she didn't want me to expose myself to the world as an idiot. And mm -hmm. she thought it... It was unseemly and undignified, and those are her own words. It's very unseemly and undignified, <laughs> just that way, she said. She colors it a little differently when she She preferred speaks, that yeah. I would try something else, a doctor, a lawyer, but I persisted, and I have brought glory to her apartment in Brooklyn. <laughs> Cake and coffee are served at 11 o'clock every night. They come in and look at the Oscar. Jeez. Your son, your son, the tall one. <laughs> Believe it or not, I, am the, I have brothers and a mother. Everybody in my family is about 4'3", four, 4'4". Three, four, four. I'm kidding. I am it's called it. Stretch at home. <laughs> the, uh, very short people. Well, your wife, uh, Ann uh, Bancroft. Baxter. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. Do you, you ever make that mistake? That would be a... No, I never have. I no. Think so. no. Somehow. Where does she keep hers? Uh, um, her Oscar. Oscars. Wait a minute. What's she won? Uh, one... She's won an Oscar, two or uh, three British Academy Awards, mm -hmm. uh, the Cannes Film Festival, uh, Tony or two. Uh, she's won a couple of awards. Yeah. Uh, also on her mother's TV set. Yonkers. Oscars go to mothers. Oscars go to mothers. That's the title of my next musical, Oscars Go to Mothers. <laughs> Oscars go to mothers. Oscars. Yes. Yes. You can take anything and turn it into I art. I sure amazing. can destroy any. Mm -hmm. Bobby, are you going to catch everything? You're up to everything. Okay. Hmm. Two Jews got off an Arab. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Mel used to be a. I think we should, I think we should explain that to, to Iowa. Uh, Mel used to be a, a comic uh, for a time in uh, with what we call the mountains, yeah. I guess. Or when you actually went, went that yes, route. Yes, I you? used to do a stand-up thing. I, used to, I learned just how to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, you, they, you put your hand here and you say, Good evening, ladies and germs. Welcome to a Bang Up Variety Show presented by for the boys here at the Good Luck Inn. Mm -hmm. We have a swell high club for your eyes. Loads of talent, lots of the girls will be out in a minute. Girls will be coming out. Wait, wait, give me a break. <laughs> And I'm going to be your, your MC, that's short for metal case. I, I just flew in from Chicago, and boy, my arms tired. Did you actually do all this? I did. The mice are hunchback. Yeah. I did those jokes. You did, didn't even bother to do the first right. part, right? I used I to see. say she was so skinny, the way to check your umbrella. <laughs> or as but I became very, very tired. I worked in the mountains, and I really got sick, filled with despair hmm. each night. 
every night another string of dopey jokes, another dopey crowd eating sponge cake and drinking schnapps in the back. Must have been and awesome. so I decided that I would pioneer and I would do intelligent material. Ah. So I, one night I went out, I went out, I said, ladies and gentlemen, I decided to do something a little freaky. I said, ladies and gentlemen, man of a thousand faces. One, two, three, four, five. Now they waited for a thousand faces. Oh, no. They waited. They said, well, 76. Uh, they waited. They waited. They waited. 88. <laughs> that takes nerve. I think most people would have dropped off after 300. The next night, the mice were hunchback. Right, <laughs> right back again. You're, uh, you're up to your ears now. In a, in I a, sure am. In, in, a, in a film, I mean, in a yes. new movie. As a matter of fact, sitting in the front row, Alan Heim, my editor, who was denigrated by Rex Reed, denig all the editors, my okay. film editor, my chef de montage, sitting there with his assistants, Walter Rappaport, Richard Goldberg, sitting there, and his girlfriend, Josie. Sitting. <laughs> How do we know you're not and, making uh, up these names? No, these are normal Jewish people sitting right there. <laughs> they certainly look, look normal. Is that true? Alan, is that true that editors don't vote for directors who are working with editors? Just say yes or no, you're not on the Only show. Only California. Only California. See, in New mm. York, this yeah. thing doesn't go on. You notice that the house lights went up for two words? You know, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, Dee Dee Allen works with Arthur Penn, and she's a very, very respected and, you know, highly appreciated film editor. They, they all to, hate her in California. They hate her in California? Yeah. They're crazy in California. Because she's from she's New York? She's from New York, editor. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. Yeah, but she's respected. Is it necessary to be respected to be a good film editor? Um, any? How so? Well, you said she's very respected. You mean... No, I mean, she's done, I don't know, uh, Bonnie and Clyde. Oh, you know, oh I see. Marvelous she's films, done a lot and, you know, of good things. She's held in high esteem. Oh, yeah. You're, you just made a film in Yugoslavia. Yes. Is that not true? Uh, that, that's true, sir. Why would yes. you go to Yugoslavia when you could... Can't you find locations in America well, that look it's... like Yugoslavia? Oh, you, there's no time for you to answer that. Ah. <laughs> we will be Well, right. I'm going to answer it anyway. I don't care about your stinking commercial. We'll be but... right back. He's going to answer it. You're wondering why it takes so long. Mm. <laughs> I mean, four commercials in a station break. Oh, no, I mean, it wasn't really, that many. Really, that's dreadful. Wasn't that that's, many? It really, it's terrible. Well... It's terrible, it really is. is. It terrible? Yeah. Well, if it's... They kind of sandwich the show in, you know. Yes, we, we separate the commercials here. Right. With entertainment. Between, the work between Jell-O. It's mm -hmm. terrible. Yeah. Really, Dick. <coughs> Sing, you... Dennis. <laughs> Have you ever... Uh... Have you ever been censored on television? Is there ever anything you've always wanted to say that I've you always wanted to say, <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. Just thought I'd ask. I, no, I, I, yes. Your comedy is very clean. And... One time I did, uh, um, you once asked me a question. Yes, And was, that was uh, censored. Was it really? Uh, no, no, maybe there wasn't any time for it. Remember that when I was on, I was on Dick's show. Yeah. Uh, in the morning show. And uh, he said, what would you like to say or do that you, you know, you never have in front of millions of people. That's right, you were standing center stage, commanding the audience. And I said, give me a little, uh, Bobby, just a little, no, no, no kind of like a glory music, quiet, quiet glory, that's it. In 1941, the Japanese had the effrontery to attack our great nation. Tonight, on this stage, we're gonna answer that attack. <laughs> What are you going to say? That's all I that wanted it. to say. That was it. That was it. Now, how we were going to answer it, I didn't know. No. I'll tell you the truth. You I really didn't know where you were going. We didn't you have just a big a answer to like it, that? you know. There was, there was World War II. I mean, that mm -hmm. answered some of it. But I thought that we could come up with something to kind of put the question at ease. Mm -hmm. And we yeah. did. Yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> but it was certainly worth the effort, and not a lot of people would have the courage to state that a thing is, like that's that. That's quite true. Get to the next question, yes. you're dying. <laughs> <laughs> that's so. Well, I wanted to hear about your film in Yugoslavia. Why did you shoot oh, a film in... Oh, my film in Yugoslavia. Yes. Yes. Well, we did it in Tadeo and Vistavision. Well, we were thinking of doing it in, the, in 185 or 166. But somebody said, you better do it with a camera or else nobody's going to see it. Uh -huh. 
So we got a couple of brownies. We did a movie in Yugoslavia. Yeah. And we lived in Belgrade, the mm. heart, the very heartland of Yugoslavia. We lived there for six months in Belgrade. The whole city is lit with a 10 watt bulb. <laughs> I ate nothing but kasha three times a day. Those, that's gro those are groats. Wheat. Uh -oh. It's like it's mush. It's, it's, that's it. That's what it is. It's a Yugoslavian dish. We live there in Yugoslavia, in the mud in the fields. If you go to Yugoslavia, don't pack a horse and wagon. They have many of them there. <laughs> <laughs> don't have to take that. Everything else, everything possible, take it. Leave a horse and wagon home. Really, they're short of equipment there. Are they in certain? What? We said we're doing a movie. They said, great, great. We, we, uh, fine, terrific. Mm -hmm. Just do it anywhere. And I said, what about a camera and lights? And oh, no, we don't. Do you want a horse and wagon? <laughs> Give you a horse and wagon. Kind of limits you, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we had a Yugoslavian sound crew to begin with. And I, I'd say to them, we'd do a take, and I'd say, have you got it? And they'd say, kak duvaj. <laughs> I'd say, did you get it? They'd say, chalucit. <laughs> I'd say, did you get it? Chvala lepo. I said, if they don't understand English, how can they be the sound crew? <laughs> and the producer said, Good, good question. Good, we'll get an English sound crew. So they flew from England, sound people. They, we had a Yugoslavian sound crew for about the first month of the uh, picture. Didn't know what we were talking about. Did, did you have to scrap a lot of work? Have, have you got that, Janos? Ah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Heard yeah. Heard a few words, he said it's terrific. Isn't the plot concerned with Russia, though? Yes, the plot takes place in Russia, uh, mm -hmm. post-revolutionary Russia, 27, 1927. And we were going to, we were thinking of shooting it in Russia, but then they might start shooting in Russia. So we said, we'll get close to Russia. We went to Yugoslavia, Byzantine architecture, beautiful fields, and a lot of wagons, <laughs> horses and wagons. More wagons. Actually, I don't want to sound, you know, derogatory, pejorative about Yugoslavia because they are great people. They're marvelous people. You know, seriously, if... Uh, the Russians had attacked or, you know, invaded Yugoslavia like they did Czechoslovakia, the Yugoslavians would have fought and died to the last person. They just simply would not have... That's it. They have, the Russians have incredible respect and the brushstroke of fear for Yugoslavia. I mean, there's really... Was there any danger that while you were there? Were you ever nervous? Yeah, there was, they had a bit of a contretemps. Uh, there was uh, a Russian ambassador came over to straighten it out. <laughs> but uh, we were nervous for a few days. I mean, that uh, there'd be... Uh, few bullets whizzing by, but they settled it, you know. Do you find that action of that kind would upset you? Or are you the, death you know? always, always makes me nervous. <laughs> death, always. A little death, you know, you can't eat rice pudding, you know. True. Okay. Very bad. It's like in the morning you wake up, you die the rest of the day. And nothing to do. <laughs> no fun anymore. <laughs> Finish. Yes. Right. Who's, in the, who's in the movie? No. Uh, Ron Moody is starring in it. Oh. Uh, he was Fagan, Fagan. in Oliver. And I think he's marvelous, but you know, it's not my place to say. A New York actor by the name of Frank Langella, mm -hmm. oh, who wonderful. has never been in the film. Yeah. He did Cry of Players at Lincoln Center with my wife. Mm -hmm. And I saw him in that production, and I thought he was terrific, and he's terrific in my picture. He's good. He did something with my wife once. Would you care to tell us about it on the air? <laughs> <laughs> what did You're he supposed to get the yeah. laughs here. I shouldn't have said that. No, he did. they were in a play together. That's what I mean. Uh, Let's quickly uh, move on to the next right. thing, shall we? Hey, I, I know you don't like... And Dom DeLuise, let's not leave out Dom DeLuise. He's in the movie. He plays a Russian Orthodox priest. He finds out that there are some jewels, and he rips off his cross and his cassock, and he's off. That's... He's a terrible person. Dom DeLuise is a funny man. He's, he's really a, funny. And when we come back, can I surprise you with something? I don't know. You want to talk about it first before well, you do? Well, actually, we have something here. Do you mind if I... Does this mean anything to you? Ah, Yes. Mr. Yes. Brooks has invented a character, a wine taster, dear to the hearts of everyone who's ever met him. His name is... What is his name again? Peel a tongue. <laughs> Any name. That, that's good enough for me. We have a, a, a glass here, or beaker, yes. whatever you prefer to call it, Mr. Latung, and we wondered if you would show oh. us what exactly you do in your line of work. Of course, of course, of course. Perhaps you could identify. Uh, Chateau Moutin, 
Blanc, 58. No. 59. No. 62. No, no. Ah. Ah. Chablis. No, no. That isn't very nice. Of course, you must taste, of course. No. Ah. <laughs> it's a uh, Marc Lafitte uh, Sauterne in 1929. There's nothing like it. There will never be no, a it wine. Isn't. That's it's not, not. That's not correct. It's not Marc Lafitte. Mm -hmm. Take another little taste, a little off tonight. <laughs> a little pepper for lunch, you know, destroy the taste, but okay. <coughs> ah, it's beer. <laughs> I don't know. Not? No. No. No, I think not. <laughs> Is it chiclets? <laughs> no. No, I'm afraid you're not even warm. It's a potato knish. <laughs> no. It's farmer cheese. No, no, I'm afraid you're really way off now. Um, Goobers? No, you're far from no. it. I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back right after this. Old Yugoslavian dance there. Oh, that was great. Bobby Rosengart. Yep. He is something. Tops and taps. <laughs> Here we are, folks. Here we are, back with the extravagant Gentile and Wonder Jew. A great juxtaposition of, tex juxtaposition of textures. That's good enough yeah. for me. Here we are, back again, Twin Cities, St. Paul and Haifa. But I want to tell you... <laughs> You, uh, you called me spectacularly gentile in a national magazine one time. And I did. I'm sorry got about a lot that. Of letters Since you're people. in the business, yeah, if you want to stay in show business, uh, you just have a little nose bob done. You just get it out and turn it left, kid, or you're finished. Oh, yeah? You haven't got a chance, my friend. What a dainty suggestion. <laughs> what, what? <laughs> so, when you did your act now, are you serious about that? Did you actually get out and do the jokes and the impressions and yeah. the whole thing that comics do when they're on the... I try to do, I try to do different things, you know. I really try to break out. I used to do impressions that were weird, like I do Humphrey Bogart's sister. You know, it was strange. Ooh, no one else does that. Susan Bogart. Should I do a little Susan Bogart? How many people want a little? I think I know. All right. Well, uh, Humphrey is, uh, he's, he, he's doing very well. He's, uh, he's making a lot of money, uh, we're not worried about him. He's, he's fine. Uh, uh, he doesn't send too much money home. We'd like to see a dollar from his wife, but uh, we think he's uh, terrific. Uh, he's left an impression on our family we'll never forget. It's a blue mark on my back. Would you like to see it? <laughs> no, I wouldn't uh, care about that. That I used to do that was James both? Cagney's aunt, Hilda. Hilda Cagney. She went like this. She went like this. <laughs> <laughs> Hilda Cagney. Uh, Jimmy never were. Uh, I... He was always, what can I tell you? I mean, he was always nice in the house, never trouble, you know what I mean? Always gentle, always terrific. He never brought a penny in the house, I'll say that. He never sent any money home, but we don't care. God bless him. Let him do his thing, you know what I mean? He's very short. God bless him. That's uncanny. Killed a Cagney, right. I'd swear that his sister was sitting here now, the way he did that. It was just wonderful. Uh, don't swear to her. Right? Really, it was good. Did you do the singers? Oh, you know what? I've been asked to try to coax you to do Sinatra sometime. I'm told that you do. Oh, I have a cigarette. It's easy. That's it? You're doing it now? I used to do an impression a long time ago of Frank Sinatra, of Frank Sinatra's impression of America the Beautiful. I mean, how Frank would kind of wing it, you know. Oh. Well, will we surprise you with a little stool over there. You could use our stool. You mean really get out and sit on the stool? Okay. If you would. Sinatra, America the Beautiful. Got it? Okay. <laughs> oh, beautiful. <laughs> For spacious skies. For amber waves of green. For purple 
mountain majesty above the tutti frutti plain. Ooh, America, hey, America, God shed his grace on thee. And sort of kind of crown my dear with a big fat gang of motherhood from sea Scooby Doo to sea Scooby Doo. Well, you know the tag that. You have more than a modicum of taste. You're a very smart, good audience. You're all... Thank you. Listen. I have parked outside a 38 Maroon Buick. <laughs> I want to see you all on the back of the car after the show. I have a couple of parliaments in a glove compartment. Take a few. <laughs> Relax. Uh, we'll go to a bar. We'll talk everybody later. Yes. You're quite a, quite a generous guy. Yes, I'm a good-natured person. Mm -hmm. Say, so we have a really, uh, we've surprised you so much that I suppose it would be really presuming on your good nature to surprise you any further. But, and I hate surprises, we have uh, some things behind your chair you wouldn't suspect. It's the 2,000-year-old man's duds. Well, now you don't have to... Hold it, hold it. Don't you, you force can reject me into what this. I forgot the whole act. I usually do it with Carl. Oh, uh, well, and, uh, I resemble Carl. Yes, in, um, in your shoes you resemble Carl. I don't know. <laughs> no, but I mean, I'm just talking about the physical dimensions that, that are ah. different in terms of, you know, face, physiognomy, et cetera. You know. Why don't we, during this message, let you decide, wrestle with your soul, and see if you think you could do it? We'll see you in an hour, folks. We'll be right back. <clears throat> Here we are. Uh, you're... <laughs> Chapeau. Okay. It's All not right. the best one, but... Will it do? Sure. Can well, you make do with it? I don't know why the 2,000-year-old man camp. wears a cape. It's the worst cape. They How got many? Me the worst. Hanzago! Wonderful. All right, I'm feeling, I'm getting in character, I'm feeling it, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm Jewish. All right. <laughs> Would you like to, uh... <laughs> it's an honor to uh, see you again, sir. You are, as Cock we all know. Mamie Kane, <laughs> yes, sir. How are in you? In all of your 2,000 uh, 2, years, I doubt if you've seen a cane exactly like that. One. Never. That's the best it's that we the can... best knob, and uh, I've never seen. It's an orb. All I need is a scepter, and I can go to a Jewish party. All right. But when, uh, when were you born, sir, exactly, so uh, we can clear that up? Um, uh, let me see. I, I don't have enough digits. I couldn't do it. I was uh, born about roughly 2,007 years ago. So, 2007, so you're more than the 2,000-year-old man. A you're little older, much more yes. Than, I'm, yeah. How we say 2,007, young, not to curse ourselves. <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> cute. We're, we're very <laughs> cute people. You must have some secret of longevity that makes it possible. For A you few to... things, if I can remember. One of the main things that's kept me rolling along and singing a song for so many years, <laughs> excuse me, is exercise. Exercise has kept me happy and snappy. I think... Exercise Every day. morning I open the window, I go by the window, and I crash to my knees and I pray to God, please don't let my heart attack me. <laughs> Give me another day. That's my exercise, mainly praying to my Lord. You don't do any Keep jogging. Keep good or... work. Any, What's jogging? Any jogging or... What is it? That's running in place and exercising Running the body. in place. What's the purpose? Well, the purpose is to keep the body in good tone. Well, where keep... do you go? Well, you probably end up in the same place, unless, of course, you run across a, a large area horizontally, or if you describe a trajectory by going over a hill of some sort. That would be you another You describe a of... trajectory? Mm hmm How would you describe a trajectory? <laughs> well, it would be very difficult. I have never seen a trajectory. That's merely a figure of speech, or it's actually a... a, a in physics, it describes a, a I met a girl spit. in a bar once. I think her name was Trajectory. <laughs> 
I see. Zachary Phillips. I'm sorry, I we got into that. We used to call it Traj. Go ahead. I, I, Traj, was that it? Well, uh, <laughs> you, you probably have an advantage over all of us from you know how a lot of things started, like uh, language yes. itself. We use words oh. you know, all the time. Uh, can you remember when? <laughs> I'll be finished. <laughs> I say language. You probably were around when it was invented, the, uh, 2,000 years oh, ago. Oh, yes. So Before you... I was there when it started. I mean, when we were, when I was a kid, you know, I'm not talking about uh, the old days, uh, George M. Cohen. I mean, way back. Way back. Yeah, way yes. back. I, we didn't have language. We used to say to each other, hmm, hmm. It's a marvel you could communicate that Woof way. was good already. Woof. Ah. We didn't, then words came. Words came to describe things because we would say, hand me the hmm. We didn't know what to give them. <laughs> so right. we made up words. Mm -hmm. And uh, words came about how the object came to be. We made up the word. For instance, egg. Egg, the word egg. 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 You see, an egg. How did they include the word egg? Where did it come from, an egg? Why did they call it an egg? Why didn't they call it a glass? But it's not a glass, it's an egg, right? Egg. So we watched a chicken. Watched it, constantly looked on it, and with fierce looking and attention to the chicken. Watched it for hours and hours. We looked at the chicken, and watched it, and then we, as the egg came out, we heard egg. <laughs> oh, yes. Told it egg. That's how you got the name. Very good. So, Very good. So, so reason. There's nothing is a mystery if you bra you got brains. It's mm -hmm. all understanding for what it is. I see. Is that a speech impediment that you have? That no, sound you just made? No, it's to get a laugh. It's our laugh scene. Oh, that's it's, a, yeah, you're sometimes. a bit of a vaudevillian, aren't you, sir? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see. <laughs> a surefire laugh getter, is it? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately. Yes. Uh, uh, what have you done through the ages to earn a buck? Well, I was in many businesses, many opportunities, and, and mm, I like that. <laughs> Very but the first it. job I had in the world, the first I was in business, I was in religion. I was one of the first in that. I saw it coming. I said, this is going to be big for a few thousand years. I'm getting it <laughs> in the ground floor. Religion itself? Religion. I, yes. Worshipping and everything. I jumped in there. You saw a good thing. I saw a good thing. I was the first manufacturer in the world of the Morgan Dover, the Jewish star. I made them. I had a factory cave, a big cave. And I employed six workers, each with a point. And on a given signal, go, they would run together and make a Jewish star. Fusing Incredible. six points. And there was a lot of accidents. That's Sometimes the point would be the wrong way. They would I expect. Crash into it. But there was no workman's compensation, so we didn't care. You know, we got another what, point. What do you have planned for the future, and how much future do you think you have? About uh, 40 minutes. Well, you're silly. You have a pessimistic outlook. I have about a thing in my, in my. It's a pain in here, but I, I'll get over it. Maybe it's gas, maybe it's death. We hope for the best. <laughs> I see. That's all we can do. I see. Uh, you, would you be offended if we were to pause for a message? Do you, want a, you know what a commercial is what in our modern world? What choice do I have? I have no choice. You have to sell the jello, right? Well, it isn't actually jello. It might be any number of things. It, that's, it might be a lot of things. It might be a station break, it might be for a dopey TV show. It might be one of those <laughs> things late at night that you it have, right? One of those. It could be any number of things. It could be uh, eggs. Let's hope for the best. I hope, it, I hope they don't stink. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope not, too, now. Uh, here they come, anyway, whatever it is. 